Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you a quick update on the Vulkan backend. And by the footage you're watching right now, you can see that Exap and PeterGov already have Breath of the Wild running in a very, very performant state on the new Vulkan backend, which is going to be coming in the next week or so. There's not too much information we can gleam from some simple gameplay footage. However, there are some small bits of information that have been given to us by Exap, one of the creators of this new Vulkan backend. First of all, we know the system specs. It is running on an i7 7700HQ. That's a laptop paired with a GTX 1060, so an NVIDIA GPU. And after doing some comparisons with the compile time, which you can see in the top left hand corner from time to time, it appears as if this Vulkan backend is quite a bit faster with compiling the shaders in gameplay in comparison to the OpenGL one. When I asked Exap to confirm or deny my testing, he said that yes, it does seem to be a small bit at least faster than OpenGL, so that is at least one thing you have to look forward to. In relation to how it is running, Exap has also told us that it seems to be pretty much the exact same performance as current OpenGL in current modern versions of CMU. So again, that's some very promising information, especially so considering that a lot of people, myself included, thought that this initial Vulkan work in progress release was going to be very buggy and very low in performance. This doesn't appear to be the case, and it is some very welcome news. Now, in relation to how it's running on AMD and Intel GPUs, first of all, in respect to AMD GPUs, we pretty much have been given no information, at least thus far, so we haven't got anything to talk about. And secondly, in respect to Intel iGPUs, we have been told that the frame rate is quite good. However, it is apparently catastrophically broken. That is literally a direct quote from Exap. So I'm guessing that means it has a lot of graphical bugs. Now, as soon as I do find out any information in relation to AMD GPUs, be that in the next week or when this actually releases, I will make sure to keep you guys as updated as possible, both in respect to how the games run and what their performance is when using AMD. Now, on top of this little bit of news about Breath of the Wild being playable, at least in this Vulcan backend, we have also been given snippets of information in respect to other games, so let's take a quick look at those also. First up, we have the fact that Super Smash Bros is no longer crashing, and as you can see by the screenshots, it also progresses in-game. However, due to unimplemented transform feedbacks, it does not render any of its characters, at least properly just yet. Next up, we have Hyrule Warriors, and again, as you can see by the screenshots, it is also progressing in-game, renders its graphics semi-correctly, however, as you can see in the right-hand corner of our screenshot, we do have some vertex explosion issues. Next up, we have Pikmin 3, and similarly to Hyrule Warriors, it also progresses in-game, again, with some fairly severe graphical issues and vertex explosions. Next up, we have Xenoblade Chronicles X, and while it does boot and get to its title screen, it does not correctly render the graphics here due to the fact that this area relies heavily on stencil masks and those are not currently correctly implemented in Vulkan. Next up, we have another title going in-game and rendering its graphics semi-correctly at least. This time, we are shown Nintendo Land. Next up, we have One Piece Unlimited World Red, a title that many of you will be familiar with if you've watched my channel in the past. And again, as with the previous titles, this is also going in-game, rendering its graphics quite well and at decent performance levels. However, as you can see in the top right-hand corner of this image, we do still have some rendering issues in the form of a broken skybox. Wind Waker HD is our next port of call, where we have now been told that except from some shadowing issues, this title on Vulkan now matches the graphical quality of the OpenGL backend. Again, this is some very promising news considering how popular this game is on CMU. Next up, we've been given some screenshots of Mario Kart 8, again running in a Vulkan and with an Nvidia GPU, and while it does render a lot better than we were previously shown, it still does have some fairly severe lighting and shadow issues. Performance, however, does seem very, very good, running, as you can see, at 59 FPS, likely using the 59 frames per second cap, which many of you will know helps with desync when playing Mario Kart 8 online with CMU emulator. Next up, we have some Bayonetta 2 Progress, where it is also now going in-game and rendering its graphics semi-correctly. 
However, we have been told that similarly to OpenGL when you do not have the option GX2 draw done turned on, this game is currently suffering from a lot of graphical flickering when you turn your camera. Again, hopefully this issue can be solved sooner rather than later since Bayonetta 2 is one of my very favourite games to play on a CMU. Moving on again, we've been shown another screenshot of Super Mario Maker, this time also going in game. However, as you can see also in this screenshot, the half screen rendering bug which plagued the OpenGL backend for a long time seemingly has returned when utilising Vulkan. Again, as with the Bayonetta 2 bugs, I hope this one gets fixed very fast as I actually play quite a lot of Mario Maker on a CMU emulator, though I guess I could just play Mario Maker 2, especially so since it is now fully playable on Yuzu. Regardless of Mario Maker 2's playability, it'll still be really nice to see this game get fixed, especially so since CMU emulator has very, very good online functionality for this game. Moving on again, we've been shown screenshots of Splatoon now booting and somewhat rendering its graphics semi-correctly, you could say, in its initial title screen. Again, another game that I hope gets fixed very, very fast since I play it a hell of a lot using the online functionality of CMU. Next up, we have a game that a lot of you requested in my previous Vulcan video. This time we have Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze now actually rendering some 3D graphics. And as you can see, we do have some vertex, explosion, and pretty severe lighting issues. However, it's still pretty cool to see this game now rendering 3D on Vulcan. And finally, for this new batch of screenshots, we have been shown that Super Mario 3D World now also goes in-game, renders its 3D graphics a small bit better than it did in my previous Vulcan showcase. However, they have also told us that they have yet to figure out exactly why these glowing effects are as broken as they are. Now, as we look at a Wind Waker HD in the gameplay footage which I previously showcased in the last video, I want to address something that I guess caused a small bit of confusion in my community here on YouTube, and I guess over on a Discord also. So in my last video, I said that the next CMU release was going to be 1.16.0, and that actually is not the case at all. Basically, what's going to be happening is, as usual, we are going to be getting new 1.15.x releases, so I guess the next public release version of CMU is going to be 1.15.11, 1.15.12, or a similar numerical system like that. Then, what's going to be happening is CMU's Patreon supporters are going to be getting access to the Vulcan work in progress builds. These builds, at least right now, we have absolutely no idea what they're going to be called. They could be called 1.16.0 work in progress. Again, as I said, we have absolutely no idea what those are going to be titled. We do know exactly when they're going to release. They're going to be releasing on Friday the 26th of July, so that's next Friday for anybody watching this video on its release day. So at least we don't have too much longer to wait in order to get over this small little bit of confusion. So again, what's going to be happening is we're going to be getting regularly released Patreon builds in the form of 1.15.11 or so, then as usual one week later or seven days that is going to go free for everyone in the public and then at the same time as this is happening there are also going to be Patreon exclusive work in progress Vulcan builds, then once Vulcan is stable enough in those work in progress builds 1.16.0 will first again be released for patrons, then seven days after that will be available to everyone for free. Now you can see why I was a little bit confused in my previous video. What I thought was happening was we weren't going to be getting any new CMU builds and we were only going to be getting work in progress Patreon builds. Then once that was ready, we were going to be getting 1.16.0. So if I caused any confusion to any of you guys, I do apologize. So, at least in relation to the Vulkan API and CMU emulator, I think both in this and my previous video, which if you haven't watched it, I'll link it down below in this video's description, I've given you all of the most up-to-date information in relation to this new feature on this emulator. All that remains now is for Vulkan to actually release, and we'll all be able to see if it lives up to its hype that has been generated in the CMU community over the last few months. Even though in the previews I've shown in this and my last video, the progress is very, very promising, I do think that we should hold back our assumptions and expect this release to be very buggy. 
Now, regardless of any of the bugs, I have absolute faith that both Exap and PeterGov are going to do an absolutely awesome job in implementing Vulkan. And if the progress, as I've said, we've seen in the last few weeks alone on 3D rendering is anything to go by, these guys are definitely up to the task. So that's pretty much all the news I have for you guys today. However, before I go, I want to give another massive thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon.com. You guys are absolutely awesome helping me to pay for things like electricity bills, water bills, new games for testing, internet bills, and pretty much everything else responsible for the day-to-day -day running of a YouTube channel. If you guys like my update videos, setup guides, and everything else I release on the channel, if you would consider pledging or donating to help in the creation of these videos, it would be much appreciated. As I always say, pledging and donating in no way is required in order to get help from me either here or over on my Discord server, but to all past, present and potential future supporters, thank you guys very, very much. That's going to be it for this video guys, once again, thank you very much for watching, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.